Many people have asked me, why North Korea? I'm a Korean American who grew up in the suburbs, earned a college degree. I could live a comfortable life. But North Korea has taken hold of my conscience and imagination. Once I realized the immense suffering that took place there, I could not unsee it. I had to do something. North Koreans will forever be haunted by the multiple traumas that beset them at each step of their journey. It's a dark cloud that follows them wherever they go. This series will be about each of these excruciating steps. Hi, I'm Dan Chung and I'm executive director and co-founder of Crossing Borders. We have been helping North Korean refugees since 2003 and it has been the privilege of my life to be a part of this work. We have helped thousands of North Korean refugees and orphans in China and pray that we can continue this dangerous work for years to come. What does a typical path to freedom look like for a North Korean? We'll answer these questions and more in our new series, Breaking Down North Korea. There are countless reasons why a person would want to leave North Korea. Among them are starvation, political persecution, religious persecution, or lack of economic freedom or opportunity. But leaving is a crime punishable by death, so North Koreans must find a way to escape. The border between North Korea and China is heavily guarded. It is one of the few borders in the world that is dedicated to keeping people in and not out. North Korea has spent significant resources to make leaving as deadly as possible. If caught while escaping, North Koreans are sent to a prison camp where they are beaten, tortured, and oftentimes executed. North Koreans who flee their country know they put their lives at risk, but many have chosen to do so despite the looming threat of death. During the Great North Korean Famine of the 1990s, a North Korean could easily bribe a border guard. The only problem with this was that very few North Koreans had enough money to pay for a bribe and they didn't know which guards were willing to take bribes or where they can cross safely. Enter human traffickers. These people had the know-how and motivation to pay for bribes and learn how to best get North Koreans across the border into China. Many refugees in our network say that once they got close to the border, it would be easy for the traffickers to spot them. The pitch was pretty straightforward, where someone acting like a good Samaritan would give them an offer they couldn't refuse. Usually they would be offered a job in China and freedom to send their wages back to their struggling families in North Korea. These traffickers would often feed them at the border as well. They would be persuaded with full bellies and the promise of a new life. It's no wonder that so many tens and perhaps hundreds of thousands of North Korean women took these traffickers up on their offer. Once the women agreed, they were quickly ushered across the border, usually at night when visibility was low. Little did they know that in China they would have absolutely no human rights. Once they reached China, the escapees would be stowed away into either the back of a truck or the trunk of a car and taken to a home where they would be prepped for sale. They had no legal recourse. 70% of North Korean refugees are women, and 80% of these women have been sold, according to a 2008 U.S. congressional report. But why would so many people buy a North Korean woman? What would happen to these women? All of this and more in the second part of our series, Breaking Down North Korea. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel where we will be sharing more North Korea facts.